Inflation has been the problem the entire time, except that central bankers and governments relied on inflation as the solution to their problem. In fact, for the last decade, the one thing central bankers seem to agree on, whether it was in Japan or in Europe or here in the United States, they agreed that the problem with inflation was that there wasn't enough of it. We just didn't have enough inflation. Prices were rising too slowly, and that was a problem that the central banks were determined to solve. They were going to do whatever it took to increase the inflation rate up to 2% per year, because 2% was what they claimed was the holy grail of inflation. That inflation must be 2%, prices must go up by 2% every year, and if they don't, well, this is a huge problem, and the central banks need to solve this problem with radical monetary policies. Even if it meant negative interest rates, they would do that in order to make sure that the cost of living went up by 2% per year. Now, to average people, this would sound absurd. Why does the cost of living have to go up by 2% a year? And if it only goes up by 1% a year, what's, why is that a problem? Why does it need to go up faster than that? Most people would rather the cost of living go down. If food got cheaper, people would like that. If their rent went down, everybody would love that if your landlord said, hey, we've decided to cut your rent this year. Nobody would object to that. What if you, know, you go to the gas station and the prices are lower? Good news. What if college tuitions went down? What if medical bills, instead of going up, what if they went down, right? Everybody would love that. Everybody likes it when the things that they want to buy, the things that they need to buy, become more affordable. So why was it a problem for the central banks that the stuff we needed to buy wasn't going up in price fast enough and it needed to rise faster? And first of all, where did they get this 2% figure? Why is 2% so great? Why not 1.5%? What's wrong with that? Or 2.5%? I mean, why is 2.5% too high and 1.5% too low? Why is 2% just right? And the answer is, it's not. 2% is not better than 1%. It's worse. 1% is better. And negative 1% is better than positive 1% when it comes to prices. But the way this 2% target came about was years ago, many central banks began implementing 2% inflation as a ceiling. What the central bankers were telling everybody was that we we're going to keep inflation below 2%. If it gets up to 2%, we're going to take action because 2% is our ceiling. We don't want it to get above 2% a year. So as long as it's below 2%, everything is okay. Gets to 2% or higher, we're going to spring into action to make sure it comes back down. Well, somehow along the way, that 2% ceiling became a target where central banks said, we need to get up to 2%. That was never their mandate. No central bank had a mandate of making sure inflation was 2%. It was just making sure inflation was below 2%. That didn't mean that if it was 1%, they had to try to get it up. They would just say, oh, it's 1%, that's great. It's below 2%, we succeeded. But they completely changed. Why did they do that? It was all a pretense. The central bankers were faced with some serious economic problems that they didn't want politicians to have to deal with. Countries had run up a lot of debt and the governments really didn't have the ability to pay all this debt. And so what central banks did was lower interest rates to make that debt affordable by lowering the interest payments on that debt. And that allowed governments all over Europe, governments in the United States to continue to pile on debt without having to make any difficult political choices of raising taxes or cutting spending. But also, because central banks kept interest rates so low, it wasn't just government debtors that were able to go deeper into debt. It was the private sector, corporations, individuals, everybody loaded up with debt. And the more debt everybody took on, the more the Federal Reserve and other central banks felt compelled to keep interest rates artificially low 
because allowing interest rates to rise would have caused a financial crisis. A lot of people would have defaulted on their debts, including governments. And so the central banks kept interest rates low and kept printing money. Now, they called it quantitative easing, but quantitative easing is basically a euphemism for inflation. That's what it is. When the Federal Reserve launched quantitative easing for the first time in 2009, what it really decided to do was monetize government debt and create inflation. That's what quantitative easing was all about. It was about inflation. And in fact, the central banks justified quantitative easing and negative 0% interest rates because they said these policies were necessary to raise the inflation rate. Inflation was too low. So central banks recognize that these policies were in fact inflationary because they were designed to cure the problem of too low inflation. But that problem didn't exist. All they did was pour gasoline on an inflation fire. Now, inflation didn't really rear its ugly head in a way that became a big problem until last year. And that's because these monetary policies operate with a lag. And what surprised me was the length of that lag. The inflation that we're experiencing now in 2022 really started in 2009, 2010. We haven't even caught up to the inflation we created in 2020. Uh, that's coming. But there's all this inflation in the pipeline. Another reason that that inflation did not become as big a problem is because the way the money entered the economy in many cases was through the banking system through the financial markets so the prices that were impacted the most by inflation were stock prices bond prices real estate prices and so people didn't mind when inflation was making them richer in fact people like that politicians like that everybody likes a bull market so when inflation is first entering the economy and the first impact it has is on asset prices nobody's worried about it and so the central bankers kept creating it the other factor that was important was the fraudulent way that governments measure inflation particularly here in the united states i'm more familiar with our cpi but i think other cpis in other countries are similarly flawed by design the increase in consumer prices, the way it's officially measured, is not nearly as great as what is actually experienced by consumers when they're buying goods and services. So if you have an official measure of inflation that says prices are going up by 1.5% a year, it's possible they're going up by 4 or 5% a year in reality. And so when the government says, hey, we don't have enough inflation, we got to get that 1.5% inflation up to 2%, what they're actually doing is getting that 5 or 6% inflation rate up to 10%. Now, where we are today, you've got nations all around the world reporting official inflation rates at 8%, 9%, 10% or more, which means the unofficial actual rate of inflation is probably somewhere between 50 and 20%. So inflation is a enormous problem all over the United States. Look, I just got the other day my uh, new uh, premium for my homeowner's insurance policy for my house I have in Connecticut, and it was a 38% increase over the prior year. I mean, that's, that dwarfs what the government says inflation is. And the reason my insurance premiums went up so much is because they said the cost of replacing the house, if it burns down, has gone up so much because of the increase in raw materials and labor costs, it's going to cost 38% more to rebuild my house than it would have cost to rebuild the same house a year ago. That's what's going on in reality. And I've experienced in my personal life, and so have so many other people that email me, price increases that dwarf what the government claims is the increase.